All right, guys and ladies out there watching us. Uh, once again, here we are, Three Comic Money from uh, ComicBookInvest.com. Uh, this week is sort of a cool uh, thing. Just by happenstance, uh, if I don't, hopefully you follow us on uh, Instagram, and we put out a photo of just some classic black and white comic book photos. And we put out this photo, and lo and behold, the guy who was in the photo is here with us today. Um, <laughs> it was so cool. He reached out to us through Instagram, and if you go back to the, and find that photo on Instagram, he's talking back and forth with our uh, Ben, and they're just talking. And so we got John here with us, and he's going to talk. Uh, and Peter's going to show show the photo again, just to remind everyone. Let me um, drop it on top of us, just so people can see it. There so, it is. So John, um, talk to us about that photo for a second. Just like what brought it about? Well, that was actually in a, a newspaper article to promote my fanzine that I uh, published from ages eleven through thirteen. Uh, that was my first, uh, you know, unprofessional start in comics. <laughs> but I knew what I wanted to do from the time I was a kid. And and I've got a copy of my fanzine right oh, wow. here. Uh, it was called The Mighty. Uh, and this was the final issue. As you can see, it's a special Bruce Lee issue. <laughs> oh, that's uh, awesome. The title in the corner down there, The Mighty. Uh I wonder if I could get a little better lighting. I don't know. Could you see that, AK? Okay? Oh, it was gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Did you sell those, or did you give them away, or? Uh, well, I, my dad published my uh, fanzine for me, and um, that photo was just from a newspaper article uh, that it was in a local paper about my fanzine. Uh, I, I had a few, uh, uh, but were published back then. I was kind of a little local celebrity with my comic book. <laughs> that that was impressive. How did you ever count how many you had at that point? How many comic books you had? Oh well, uh, what the way I really got into it was I always loved to draw. You know, from the time I was a little kid. And um, hey, when I was nine years old, I wrote to Jack Kirby. You know, he was my favorite artist my whole life, and um, he. Uh, encouraged me with my artwork i sent him some copies of, of different drawings that i had done and he told me my uh, work looked very advanced for a person of my age and for me to pursue it as long as my interest was sustained that's what he said <laughs> and I, mean, I just really took it to heart you know i was, I was just about to turn 10 years old and so uh, i uh, really decided well this is what i want to do i mean you know i, I loved kirby so much and when I first became a fan, I mean, I've, I've probably been collecting longer than you guys, but I got into comics back at the very end of uh, Stan and Jock's run at Marvel. I got to collect like the final year. And this mm -hmm. was, I was just a little boy, you know, and then when Stan and Jock broke up, I mean, I was heartbroken. It uh, was just like such a shock to my young world. That was like mm. the greatest thing, you know, that was going on in my life was Stan and Jack's Fantastic Four and Thor. So it's like I the Beatles breaking up. DC. <laughs> As you see, I can go on and on about this stuff. Go, go ahead. A picture of me and Jack at the... Uh, 1975 Marvel Comic Con when I was 13. I wish I could get some better light on this. Oh, there we go. Can you see there it? Is. Oh. Whoa. Anyway, that was the that was the 1975 Marvel Comic Convention. So that was I don't think I realized there was comic conventions back then. It, it was uh, the uh, Mighty Marvel Comic Con. It was, it was the first one. You may have heard of it. They, they only had two Marvel comic conventions. It was in New York. And, mm -hmm. uh, I was 13. I got my parents to take me up there for my uh, birthday. I'm, I'm from North Carolina. Oh, wow. It was, a, it was very nice of them to take me. Yeah. But, you know, they knew how much it meant to me. And we actually all had a good time, my family. And we went back the very next year for the second Mighty Marvel Con, and then after that, they didn't have any more. But um, hmm. I got to meet Jack at the first one. It was uh, pretty much of a shock because he, he wasn't even actually working at Marvel. He was at D.C. You know, yeah. 75, yeah. And it was at that convention it was announced that he was coming back to Marvel. So the rest of 
<laughs> the rest of that convention story is that um, uh, as a little kid, you know, I'd just seen a picture of Jack in the, in the magazines and stuff. And we had heard this rumor that he was maybe going to show up at the convention. And we got on the elevator and this couple got on after us. And it was Jack and Roz. Jack and Roz. <laughs> And I, I was looking at the guy going, that looks like Jack Kirby, you know, but I can't. You know? <laughs> and then when we got off the elevator, it was announced Jack Kirby will be appearing in the main ballroom. And, yeah, everybody went crazy because he was working for D.C. I mean, this is when they announced he was coming back tomorrow. It was at that con. And I was just looking yeah. at him and he was looking at me. I, he, I think he was thinking, that kid, that kid knew it was me. <laughs> That's anyway. so. That, would that have been right before his his Eternals run? Was well, that right before the Kirby come back and did, he did the Eternals? Right. Uh, well, yeah, that would have been next. Uh, that was when he went back to Marvel in the seventies. Uh, uh, you know, he yeah. did Eternals and uh, Black Panther and uh, Captain America. And I, I mean, I followed him from the time he went to D.C., though, you know, and, and I bought the fourth world when it first came out. And uh, I'm still a huge New Gods fan. I'm, I'm looking forward to that film. Yeah. Yeah, gonna you're going to get it soon. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll do it right. Let's hope D.C. do it right. <laughs> and let's talk about our, car, our, our comics. Let's name uh, John. Name, pick up your first comic and you, you'll share it. Sure. Um, well, my, I've only talked about Jack Kirby so far, but my uh, second favorite artist was Barry Windsor Smith. And uh, this was from the time I was a kid, too. Uh, I started buying Conan with the second issue. And I was, like, you know, very young. But I wound up getting to Ink Barry. Um, and this is one of the books that we did together, Rune. <laughs> I signed it. You know? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> You can see our names on the mask there. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw any of that stuff. or uh, Well, I think one of you said you were a big uh, Conan fan. But that was the second issue of Rune. And uh, at that point, I can remember uh, working with Barry. My inks were progressing. I, uh, you know, it was a big thrill for me to ink Barry. I actually, I relocated uh, to where he lives. Uh, and worked with him at his studio, Windsor Smith Studio, on a daily basis. And um, yeah, I think I worked with Barry closer than any other inker did. Uh, now he told me to come up, and um, I, this was right when I was first breaking into comics. I mean, I had done very little work. It was kind of my big break, actually. Nice. So, I, so, I loved I loved Rune. I actually when um, I first started back into comics, I I bought Rune. And I was talking to Pete earlier about how the backs made the big poster. Uh, do you? I, I'm yeah. not sure if you did the back covers and the front covers too, but the back covers were like this connecting thing. And I've always wanted to go back and buy that Rune set <laughs> just so I could. Just, well, I mean, you guys are going to hold it so I can recollect. I know they're not worth a whole lot, but they're. I think they're great. It was. It was a great book. It was really something that really got me back in when I was younger. Hey, Mike, why don't you start? Show us your next book. Show us what okay. your, your first very Windsor book is. Okay, my, my 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 very first is I guess his very first at Marvel. Uh, so this is his uh, X Men fifty three, um, which, if I'm not mistaken, was Barry's first work at Marvel. Um, it's uh, it's definitely a standout cover from this little run. I mean, you got, you got all kinds of guys working through these, like these issues. Steranko did a couple, and there's obviously this one here, and you've got you know you've got Kirby going through some of that stuff, and um, just but this one's a real standout. And I remember I missed this book at our local shop, Chris, mm -hmm. um, the first time. I, I literally the guy in front of me uh, in the in the boxes we pulled them out from the from the back behind the counter and he snagged it out and it was the book that i went to the shop to go get and so i, I really had i really had to go sort of hunt a, a nice one down but just beautiful colors um and just really crisp really crisp lines and this is this clearly is not what uh what you know we end up knowing those it's just the one i think he only did this one book in that original run and then he, yeah. he came back and did some other x-men later like in the 180s and 200s but yep. um but I always just loved how this one kind of just stuck out to me 
um, from from a really crisp, clean line standpoint, as well as from a color standpoint. So, well, that was back in, when Barry was doing the Kirby style thing, and uh, it was you know very interesting that he did that. I thought, yeah, 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 very uncharacteristic, but but I do like the history behind the book. Well, he told me the first artist that he actually imitated was Gil Kane. Uh, oh. uh, but, you know, that was before he broke in. You know, by the time he got in at Marvel, he was drawing like Jack. And uh, that didn't last long, though. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. All right, Pete. Pete, what book are you going to show us from uh, Barry Smith? Oh, you want me to go next? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to start off and go with... Uh, and my oddball pick, I guess, first, I'm going to start with my Valiant book. I went with uh, Eternal Warrior because I really like Master Dark. I thought he was a, a great villain, you know, for the uh, Valiant universe back then. So uh, I always liked this cover. Uh, something about his art, he did so much of that early Valiant work. Uh, that's where I really came to know uh, Barry Windsor Smith mostly was when I started collecting comics like around this time in the, you know, in the 90s. So this Eternal Warrior 6 is uh, one that kind of stood out. So I went with that one. Well, that was uh, a good issue. I I ain't, I ain't the next issue. That was the next issue of Trial Warriors Seven. That was my first Windsor Smith. Uh, really? Yeah, I I think six, six pages on uh, Archer and Armstrong that I didn't get credit for, and then I did ink his final two Archer and Armstrong books. Nice. But, uh, that at Trial Warriors Seven was the first thing I did. So that was the next issue after the one you held up. Yeah, with the blue cover, it had like a another face like shot. Very nice. That's cool, Chris. What'd you do? All right, so it's actually right behind Peter. Uh, Machine oh. Man uh, number two. Uh, this little run, I I, I have a affinity, I actually really do like Machine Man just because or X fifty one, depending on which series you're reading and everything. I love the fact he came out of the two thousand one Space Odyssey, but this is the I guess it's this character, Arno Stark's first appearances in this, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but Iron Man 2020, he's, um, now they're still doing the series. Uh, they redid the series, but it's sort of a cool. But th this entire run has some great Barry Windsor Smith covers. I wish they didn't have the border around it, but it's still a pretty cool cover. So. I like the border. See, yeah, it's, I'm not a... I'm not as much a fan, though. I do love the drawing on the thing. And also, like I told, I surprisingly only have three total Barry Smith books. So that's not a lot of choices when you had to do three three comic money. <laughs> um, that was certainly a great uh, series. I always worked with uh, Herb. Uh, they, they were friends. I, I met uh, Herb up at Barry's studio. And <laughs> I talked to him a couple of times. Um, but it was interesting how uh, Barry just kind of uh, took over, I guess, as uh, I think he did the last issue by himself. I, I, I believe he, what he told me is that he, he hadn't done comics in a while, so he asked her to do the layouts to kind of help ease him back into it. And, okay. uh, but I so, love that. So he had a break between Conan and Machine Man? Was it like a, or was it was that, or did he have something in between, like comic wise? Hmm. Well, I remember his Conan work, you know, that was what introduced me to his stuff. So, I mean, I, I consider Red Nails like one of the best drawn, maybe the best drawn comic series hmm. or two issues, whatever it was, ever. You know, I, I just loved that. That was kind of the peak of his uh, Conan stuff. And I mean, I, I liked his later Conan stuff. I mean, his, his later comic stuff, but Conan is the thing that has that nostalgic appeal from when I was a little kid, you know? So. Yeah. So, Chris, I don't know. To answer that question, I don't know, Chris, whether he had anything. I'm trying to think what he could have had in between there, but I don't, I can't think of what he would have had in there. I don't know what, what it would be. Yeah, I'm curious. And we can figure that out before we write. Um, so, John, what, I know you have another book for us, and it's another one that you inked on for Barry. What other book? What's your next book? What's your second book? Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Archer and Armstrong. Uh, 
I think this issue, this was his last issue. <laughs> I saw the cover again, but uh, these are just the ones I can get my hands on quickly. This is uh, number, uh, number 11. And actually, he did one more after that, but I inked it to uh, number 12 was the last issue. Anyway, uh, I was really excited to get to work on this. When uh, Marcher and Armstrong came out, it was my favorite series. And uh, I, had, I had met Barry, uh, well, I met him at the 75 Marvel Con when I was a little kid. And then one other time, and then in 91, I saw him again at a Heroes Convention down in uh, Charlotte. And uh, uh, at that time, I was assisting Joe Sennett. I was inking backgrounds for him, and I was showing Barry some of that stuff, and I was telling him how much I would like to uh, work with it. And so then uh, at that time, uh, the Valiant stuff hadn't started to come out yet. But when it, when it came out, I, I kind of saw a window there, like Barry's back in comics. Maybe this is my chance to try to ink it. And so I saw him again at the San Diego convention in uh, in 92. It was my uh, second, uh, well, my first San Diego con, actually. And I convinced him to let me ink some samples for him and uh, I got to work with him at Valiant. And then we went on to work on Rune together from Malibu. And I also worked with him on uh, Wild Storm Rising for Image. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, when, the, when that Valiant stuff hit the first time, man, it was it was mayhem. I mean, I remember everybody trying to go to the shops to get those, the Harbinger, the all, all of it. I mean, it was it was tough to get your hands on. People really wanted it. It was it was a new, fresh thing that must have been really exciting to be in on the ground floor of all that, John. Well, I've, I've got some rune artwork here uh, I was going to show if you want to see that. Would you yeah, like please. to sell any of it? <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to get out of order, you know. I've no, go ahead. No, go we ahead. love seeing. I'd love to see it. Yeah, go ahead. Show it. Yeah, go ahead. Hold up, but should please I? Please do. Please. And to go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right. And let's see. A giant size rune. Uh, that was a, a book that we did together. That I did uh, finished art over Barry's layout, nice. and um, I've got a few of the pages here. This was one of them, uh, the full pager. Um, I don't know if you guys ever read the Ultraverse, but uh, that was the main series I did with Barry. We, uh, we wound up doing like uh, 250 pages together, but most of it was a uh, rune. Oh, so another oh that is great. Now on this one, Barry gave me like uh, a loose layout. Now I'd been inking him for a while. So I was able to go in and add the uh, details to it and try to make it look like he drew the whole thing. That was really awesome. the, the goal. But the truth is when I did these, I would take a, a blue pencil and draw on top of what Barry gave me, and then I would go back and ink the whole thing. It was, it it, caught, it took me a lot longer to do all that than it did for him to uh, draw it. <laughs> the kind of the idea, you know, of me you know, doing finished art for him was so he could speed up like that. And he was also uh, doing uh, finished pencils on a, I think it was the last issue of Rune Number Six at the time. So. Um, I helped him get get that giant size issue done that way. And, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh. So when you're talking like inking, so you you said you got to you got to just basically draw a lot of what you just got to finish up everything he did. And can you talk through like your process? Um. Well, uh, talk talk about doing the finished art some more. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, just keep going. Yeah, I should have probably grabbed. Uh, um, but what what Barry would give me on these pages was just uh, you know, like none of the blacks would be there, none of the uh, detail would mm -hmm. be there. It was basically, just uh, outlines of the figures and uh, you know what was going to appear. Uh, in the scene, but I had to add the detailing, and because I had been inking him already at that point for, uh, well, we worked together two and a half years, so that was probably 
maybe getting close to the two year point. Um, I, you know, having inked him previously you know, on a lot of pages, that was how I was able to finish it off like that. Really. Nice. All right, Mike, what is your second book? All right, I think I, I think I glimpsed this actually as Peter's next book, and I'm really sorry, Pete, but this is my favorite from the Weapon X series. Oh, I, I think you chose this one, Pete. I thought I saw it on your table. I mean, I, don't get me wrong; I love the close-up shots, and most of this series, which is um, through from I think it's from issue 72 through 86, I want to say something like that, or 84. Um, Four, I think. Uh, a lot of them are like really close up detail faces and, and some really sort of angry Wolverine stuff. But this one I thought with, with the environment in it and, and the, it just gave the visceral attitude of the character and it really sort of um, it sort of harkened back to his work on Conan to me. Like this feels like if yeah. that were Conan, this would easily be a Conan cover. Um, and I think maybe I was drawn to this because it had more of an old school Barry feel to it than say some of the other ones in the run. And, and don't get me wrong. I love the whole run. I think the covers are great. The interiors are, are really great. They're really um, gritty and um, there's a lot of feeling and, and heart in them, which I think I, I like Barry's art mostly because of, but so sorry, Pete, I think, I think I snagged your pick, but, you uh, did. but I love, I love this one. This, this is my favorite from the run. Well, Weapon X was incredible. I mean, what can you say? You know, that's, uh, he'd always be remembered for that. Yeah. And more than Conan. Yeah, which is strange, right? I mean, you would think it would be Conan, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he created the new story arc, essentially, almost single-handedly, that, that sort of propelled the, the origin story forward from there. So it's, it's hard, to, hard to argue that it's the best thing he, he did. Important well, wise, a little bit of his Wolverine origin made it into some of the X Men films. You know, that yeah. was a thrill to sit there and say, Oh, yeah, now this part, you know, this is where Barry yeah. came up. So, even yeah. though it wasn't that much, but like whenever they would show him running around naked, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that was happening, they were showing Weapon X. So, uh, Pete, what, are you going to go with the repeat, or are you just going to reach behind you and grab one behind you? I can here. Uh, I can show a couple of the other ones I thought about. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> yeah, so I did think about this one because, again, you got the helmet. It's just a nice close-up, a nice action shot with the blood covered and all of that. It, it This is a gorgeous cover, as is this one, which, you know, it's him with underwater getting the adamantium put into him. An image we've also kind of become accustomed to seeing, but <laughs> I did pick this same book as Mike, so this was my <laughs> pick and is my second pick for the same reasons that Mike picked it. I love the background, I love the setting. It's just it's just a gorgeous piece of art, and uh, that's why I wanted I picked this one out of the entire run. This was my favorite of them. Yeah, that, so we duplicate. Uh, you guys agree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Some, yeah. Every every once in a while, we'll we'll end up crossing streams as far as our thinking. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, but, it says a lot about that cover, right? I mean, obviously, if we both yeah. chose it out of a run of twelve issues, that, get that, but... yeah, yeah, it's great. So, like I said, I only had three books I could find, so I'm actually pulling one of Mike's books from Gorillas and <laughs> going with Conan number eleven. Just a great. Barry Smith cover. I, I mean, I was sort of stoked. I, I, it was basically Mike showed it, and I went and got it because it's just such a great cover. Uh, but yeah, Conan number eleven, just a great. And I, I do like. You guys know the story behind the twenty five center? No. Uh, Marvel dicked with DC. They uh, Marvel made DC a deal and said, "Hey, let's raise the price this twenty five cent, do a bigger issue," and and they both did it. Well, Marvel only did it for one issue. And there's all there's a 25 center, and then it goes back to 20 cents because they were all going from 15 cents to 25 is what DC thought. So that's why you have those DC crappy issues that are 25 cent giant size with a bunch of filler stuff is because DC wasn't prepared with the printers. So that you have about seven or uh, five or six issues from DC that are 25 cents, and then Marvel drops down to 20 cents, so they sell more books. Nice. <laughs> that's dirty, man. That is dirty. 
it, it's it's awesome. Like that alone makes the buying the collecting the twenty five cent issues because the next issue of twelve is twenty cents again. Mm. So uh, I remember that well. You know, it was uh, interesting how they handled that transition. <laughs> yeah. So you you do, John? You do remember that? Like, did it did it work on you? Like, did you go buy more Marvel because they were cheaper? Well, I mean, I didn't like what happened at DC during that uh, period when they just kept it at 25 cents for so long, you know, and they ran all those reprints in the back. Mm. Yep. Well, that was my gripe about it. You know? yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really care for those uh, reprints. But <laughs> it was probably some of my first exposure to Simon and Kirby. So, I mean, it definitely was. I uh, kind of uh, was a Marvel fan first and then followed Jack over to DC and started buying some DC stuff as a kid. Um, but I wound up inking for DC more. I inked Batman for them for five years a month with mm. 99 to uh, uh, 2003. I was uh, the regular inker on uh, Batman Gotham Knights issues 1 through 49. Mm. And that, uh, I've got, uh, this, this came out this year. Um, might as well promote this a little bit. Uh, Batman, uh, Gotham Knights Transference. It's uh, like the first uh, nice. 12 issues or so. Uh, yeah, the first 12 issues. Hopefully they're going to collect the rest of it. But um, that's something that, uh, you know, is still at the comic store now. It came out at the beginning of the year, so. Um, and actually, they reprinted this. I think the first appearance of uh, the new Batgirl, oh. um, the mute Batgirl. Awesome. Oh, did you? I didn't know that. It was uh, Batman uh, number 567. This was back in 1999. That was my very yeah. first Batman book. And it was originally just a two issue job, but I kept it going for uh, five years. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice so work. Did you have like dirty pictures on someone, or how were you able to? Here's another Batman book that I'm very proud of. Batman. Love Ooh. Batman. Oh yeah. Did with uh, Dennis Cowan. Uh, Dennis is an artist I really enjoy inking. Yeah. And, uh, so I've got a pretty good uh, amount of Batman books under my belt. I think I've actually inked 58 issues for DC over time. Um, and we, I was even going to ink a, a series uh, called Batman Mortality that we only did one issue of, and then it got uh, canceled or you know, decided they weren't going to go forward with it. But uh, they they recently published uh, Gotham Knights number 12 in this uh, trade paperback. Um, Arkham Asylum, Victor Sachez, or how are you pronouncing mm -hmm. it? Character's name. That was an issue that in, in 2000 they thought it was too violent, so they decided not to print it. And that just came out this year finally, uh, 20 years later. Interesting. I don't have really? one of those in front of me, though. I never got a copy of that yet. So that issue 12. So wait, you, that it never got printed? Like you, you inked it and then it just got released in a trade? Uh, could you say that again? I'm sorry. The the issue twelve never got printed, or it got recalled. The there's a there's a Victor Zaza issue. Uh, it was this was Gotham Knights twelve it, that never got published. I thought it was too violent at the time. Okay. Wow. Paperback. I don't that's know if that cool. answers the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. awesome. Your turn. The book three. Oh. Uh, well, it was this. This was the uh, Rune uh, Spin edition of uh, Rune Zero. Ah. I collected, it, it was in the uh, first publications of the Ultraverse that they had a three page uh, Rune story in the back of each issue. And uh, they collected that into Rune Zero. And there was this edition that came out in Spin Magazine, which is. Uh, which is this one. It wasn't the regular Rune Zero. It was the Spin Magazine edition. So that's the third one I held up. Um, it's kind of a rarity, I guess, but not if you bought Spin Magazine. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never seen that book before. No, me either. 
But Mike, I think that's where that poster comes from, those three page things that he was just talking about that collected. I don't think it was Rune. I think it was the little previews of Rune that got collected in that book made the poster. Made the poster? Damn. I don't know if the poster's in that, but I think that's what made the poster or the okay. other. Book. Okay. All right. Now I gotta go. I have to go buy them all now. <laughs> I have to. I have to. I remember it so fondly getting all that stuff. And having it be actually pretty difficult to find them when in my shops anyway in Connecticut during those years, but I don't know. Maybe well, I just had terrible some shops. Some monsters book coming out, you know, in two thousand one. It's uh, I'm not sure the publisher is going to be, but have you heard that announcement that Barry is going to be doing that? No, no. that's awesome. It's this book. It's a three hundred page book that Barry's been working on for like you know twenty years. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, last thing that he does, I mean, you know, you never know, could be, but I, I hope not. Uh, but it's been so long in the making. I, I know at one time DC was going to publish it, and then that uh, didn't happen just because Barry. They, I was told by an editor that uh, they told Barry, "Go ahead and wrap it up," and he said, "It's just not done." <laughs> so, <laughs> he, uh, you know, is really making it something special. It's going to come out in two thousand one. And I think a lot of people will probably be excited that he's doing something again because it's been so long. You know, Storyteller yeah. was pretty much his last thing. Yeah, you can order it on Amazon January 19th, 2021. Jesus. Yeah. That's cool. It's like George Martin with his deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> I almost worked on Storyteller, but it uh, didn't, didn't quite happen. But uh, came pretty close. Mm. At that point, I, I moved back. Uh, I, I had moved to New Jersey, so I wasn't living up by Barry anymore. But, uh, Jersey. Uh, yeah. Are, are you from Jersey? I, I am. I'm in Jersey. Well, I love Jersey. I mean, I'm a, I'm a graduate of the Kubert School. So okay. I, I was there for three years, and then I moved back uh, for eight more years. So I may still go back to Jersey sometime. No, nice. I like being close to New York. You know, it was great to be there, but not quite living in the city. Yeah, I understand. I hear that. I have a friend who lives in New York. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traded places with him if I went back. I would still, <laughs> still go to Jersey. <laughs> All right, Mike. What is your third book? I don't, I don't, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. Uh, I'm sure you saw this one coming, but it would be Barry's last issue of Conan, but it would be the first Conan cover, uh, first cover indeed, and first full appearance of Red Sonia, who nice. is my, nice. my my love affair. Uh, I'm the only guy in the world that cares this much about Red Sonia anymore. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna laugh at everybody when that movie gets released finally, and I'm sitting on all these. Crazy, weird, rare things, but that you will um, never this, sell. That I will never sell. So it doesn't matter what they're worth. Um, I, I I love the complexity of this cover too. This is one of those covers that, um, obviously, you know, you've got red in her in her full armor, which would change really quickly. She would wear the bikini right away in the next the next time she popped up, which was issue forty four, I think, and then in in some Savage Sword issues. Um, but this was that weird sort of prototype time where they weren't sure how they wanted to dress her. But I still love this cover. I think it's great that she's on there this early. It's a really, really complex cover. There's a lot of action going on. And like usually these kinds of sort of entourage shots or whatever you call them, they get busy and ugly and kind of confusing and messy. But still, Barry managed to make it um, nice and clean. I know what's going on. It's just, I don't know. I love this cover and I, I even try to get four ends of it when I can, when I can get it. But um, I've, I've upgraded and upgraded and upgraded and eight is as far is as high as I've gotten. Um, but, uh, but still just a, just a great, a great book and introduction to my, to my favorite, my favorite female character. So had to choose it. Yeah. That and red nails. I mean, you know, those were the, the best stories that, the best kind of stories he drew and the stuff yep. had fully matured at that point. Yep. And, it's uh, too bad he was done on Conan there at that point. But I mean, I think it was one of those, those perfect runs. No one will ever, you know, argue that it's a, a great run from, from one all the way through 24. I think there's one or two in there he didn't do, but, um, but for the most part, it's that whole run from one to 24, which is great. So hard to argue. 
Absolutely. Um, I, you know, uh, was introduced to Conan by Bob Conan number two. I mean, that was the first time I saw the character. And, uh, you know, I just I loved it from that point on. But Bar Barry's version of the character is still my favorite. You know, a lot of people like Buscema. I, I liked uh, Buscema's Thor and FF, but not his Conan. I, I felt he followed Kirby better than he followed Barry's yeah. Conan me personally but. i agree all right peter what you got for your last book oh my my last book uh well, my last book i went a different direction which just i think it's just a cover he didn't really do much with this but i went with this uh daredevil Ooh, 217 yeah. because i just thought it was just a gorgeous image with you know daredevil and black widow just jumping down from the cityscape it's just Awesome perspective. I, I love the the shading on this. It's just his line work is just it's gorgeous to look at. It, it it absolutely is. And so this was one that just kind of yeah, popped to me. So I wanted to make this definitely one of my uh, my three. I had again more picks. I I picked the Barry Windsor Smith last time with the with Storm up there, but so I couldn't use it again. But that Daredevil was uh, the one I wanted to go with for my third. That's a great choice. I had forgotten about that cover. That's a really great choice. Yep. Well, good, good choices. What can I say? You guys uh, do know your Windsor Smith book. He's great. <laughs> He's great. He's the great. He was one of the greatest. Yeah. Uh, my my final pick. I, I say I only got three. Well, I have then three of the last book. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> I have three of the first Elric uh, Conan fourteen. Uh, it's a great cover. It's. Uh, of course, I, I you spec and you, you hear there might be a movie, there might be a show. So I, I tried to buy every cheap copy I, I could find. So I have a three dollar one, a five dollar one, and a twenty dollar one. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's I do like the cover. I mean, it's right up. I mean, this, this one we've got the girl reaching and grabbing the leg and the pose and the intimidating sword with the magic coming out of it. Um, and the, I, I love it how it's written. It reminds me of there's like Hulk cover that's sort of similar where it's written into the wall, like yeah, the title. Uh, but I, I think that was something they sort of did back then. But yeah, and here you go, twenty cents. Uh, this is fourteen, and there's twenty cents, and the uh, eleven was twenty five. <laughs> so, but uh, no, I, I like the I like that. I mean, I think Mike, you you I helped you chase down like all the '80s Elric covers or whatever. Yeah, you did. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm an Elric fan. I mean, you know, if, if you like sword and sorcery, uh, you know, Elric yeah. and Conan are probably the two best to me. Uh, uh, you know, I love uh, Pete Craig Russell's Elric work. I think that stuff's pretty amazing. Um, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, well, what I'm actually doing right now, I can't uh, really promote yet. I'm, I'm trying to move uh, away from inking, actually. Uh, you know, I've been an inker my entire comic career, but uh, as much as I love it, I mean, it's, it's great, but it kind of depends on who you're inking as to how much I like it. I mean, like, you know, when I was inking Windsor Smith, that was like the height of uh, creative fulfillment, pretty much. You know, I mean, I, I enjoyed that just as much as if I would, had drawn it myself, maybe more. But other times you link some people where it's a little bit like, you know, this guy draws a little bit better than me, maybe. And, and it's not so much fun anymore, you know, and I... I uh, uh, since I'm mostly known as an inker, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to convince people to let me draw this stuff. And so I've decided I'm going to have to self-publish, basically. Or I, I, right now, what I'm doing is I'm, uh, if I don't self-publish, I'm wrapping up the first issue of my own character that I wrote, uh, penciled, inked, and lettered, and colored. So it's been a pretty big undertaking to get that whole uh, thing uh, done. And I've, I've stalled on it for some time. It, it's actually a character I created way back when I was a Joe Kubert student. Hmm. And I kind of liked uh, the character. So um, that's what I'm really working on now. But I don't have uh, anything I can show of that yet because I haven't really made any announcement or anything. You know, Maybe I'll do Kickstarter. I haven't really quite figured out 
how I'm going to get it released. Mostly, I'm just trying to finish the first issue. Okay. Uh, I'll yeah. Have to the show and uh, that's really what I've been doing lately. So. Okay. Well, what please, about, please let us know when, when that yeah, is, when please. that is ready to go, we would love to help advertise that and, and, uh, and, and show it and, and, uh, and get you, get people over to your Kickstarter if you choose to go that way and, uh, and, and hopefully help, help get it going. Cause I'd, I'd love to see that. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got a little bit more artwork I could hold up here. Please. If you'd like sure. To. Um, Absolutely. I just grabbed a few things. Uh, Dennis Cowan is another artist that I really enjoy working with. And I don't know if you heard the big news, but uh, the first new milestone book will be out. The DC announced it during fandom. Yep. Uh, and uh, they're, they're bringing milestone back. The first new milestone book will be out in February. So, um, Anyway, I, I uh, did uh, that Batman book I held up with Dennis. I, I also did a series called Voodoo Shop. Ooh. Uh, That's gorgeous. This is a page from that, uh, number uh, uh, issue seven, page one. I don't know if you were familiar with that. It was uh, uh, Vertigo, DC Vertigo. Oh, yes, I did. I've seen it. Yeah, I've got a copy of it right here, in fact. Now this is the trade paperback. This is out. You can uh, okay. you can find this around. Uh, Dominique with Ovidi Child Requiem. Um, nice. Anyway, I recommend that. I mean, you know, pick that up because the, the work I did with that was some of my very best stuff. That was in 2012. Uh, here's a double spread from. Uh, this was the last issue. Awesome. That's really cool. That's good. Okay. I I love seeing that eleven by seventeen like Bristol board like work. So that was just some stuff I brought in here. Uh, you know, give me a little more to hold up. And show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind at all. Uh, I also worked with Dennis on Dejang uh, Django Unchained, uh, you know, the uh, comic book uh, film adaptation. Yeah, uh, that was that was neat. So he's someone that I worked with on and off over the years, and uh, I hope to do something with him again. As far as Wendell Smith goes, you know, he basically stopped working for twelve years <laughs> or twenty years. You know, however long it's been. Yeah. More closer to 20, not 12. So uh, I'd like to do something with Barry again, but this Monsters book may be his last thing. I mean, you know, he's, he's taken so long to put it out. Uh, who knows? We'll see. I wish he'd come back and do Monster Comics again. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Would you buy oh, I would. Oh, I'd be all over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, it's it's a shame that he backed off from it, but um, it's good that he did as much as he did. You know, I mean, uh, he always kept the quality up. So that was he did. Good. He was consistent. Like his work was consistent. There was never like a uh, a bad Barry Windsor Smith piece where you looked like, oh, he mailed it in, or it was it, it was always just gorgeous. Yeah. So detailed. And that's probably what got me buying Rune when I was just getting back in because I didn't know I didn't know what any of the new comics were. None of the new Valiant stuff, none of that Malibu stuff. It was all you know, image. I was going off pure art. So I was buying Spawn because yeah. McFarlane was great. And I was buying Rune because Barry Windsor Smith was great. I didn't know what the stories were yet. So, you yeah. know, I looked I looked at some of you know some of the other stuff that was out. I said, Man, this art sucks. I don't want to buy any of this. I want to buy this beautiful stuff. You know, now of course a lot of that's worthless, but I don't care. I still look at those rune books, and they're still gorgeous. I mean, I don't care if they're dollar books; they're they're yeah. beautiful. Um, they're really cool. cool. And I want that collage. I just looked it up. <laughs> you got to get the whole thing. It's nine of them. It's nine issues, and it makes the cover for issue zero on the back. So I got my eye on an auction. Don't snipe it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know. I, I gotta say, I wish my browser had worked. Oh, <laughs> but it's fine. You, you got the low angle. 
<laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's great. All right. John, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we we loved hearing the stories. Um, Absolutely. I, I learned. I did not know about the Marvel Milestone Comic Con from 1975. Like you showed us, and and we've learned so much just from this little bit from you. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, and yes, just thank you. Yeah, thank you. It, it's been great. Thanks for all for the stories and your time, and and we'll be in touch. And and I I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mike, Chris. Peter, I really do appreciate it. You know, you guys yeah. have a nice uh, job, and uh, I hope you can make something out of it. <laughs> you probably got more than usual, Peter. <laughs> but uh, anyway, hopefully, I'll, I'll certainly look forward to seeing it. You're going to send me a link? Yes, I yes. will. I'll, I'll send it. All right. Well, great, Mike. Yep. So it's been a real pleasure, guys. Thank All you right. very much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, check out some of your other podcasts too now. Please do. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks, John. <laughs>